Controversial take. You should try to make your body look specifically whatever is most attractive to the opposite sex. Specifically, where everybody says, oh, you should just work out for you and um, you know, love yourself and all, all, that's all that matters. Forget that. Specifically, find what the opposite sex thinks is the most sexy and tailor your workouts, your diet to that goal. Your proportions, your measurements, your symmetry here on the horse farm that I have. Beautiful time. And here's why. You might say, oh, no. Well, people lie, but numbers don't. Emotions lie, but science doesn't, at least good science. And here's, and by the way, when I say the opposite sex, look, this is the modern world. So it could be opposite gender, sex, whatever, whatever sex you're attracted to and is attracted to you. But with that disclaimer, here's why. And here's why the science supports this controversial take and completely and utterly refutes the concept of no, just do whatever you think is best, you know. And, and by the way, I'll put one caveat. I'm assuming you want to be healthy. So here's how, here's, if you go to the top scientist, Daniel Lieberman from Harvard, okay, he wrote the book Story of the Human Body, he wrote a new book called Exercise. So he's an evolutionary paleoanthropologist. He studies the skeletal system of Homo sapiens, us. Um... If you look at Dr. David Buss, evolutionary psychologist, if you look at the famous evolutionary biologists, these are the most cutting edge scientists. They're on the edge of finding truth, okay? As best they can, nobody fully finds truth, but it's a process. When, let's say you as a man, okay? There's like three things men do when it comes to fitness in my experience. Number one, they just kind of have their body, whatever it is appropriate for their age. So, you know, if they're older, they kind of have a gut. If they're naturally skinny, they're skinny. You know, there's the old school way, endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph, right? So if you're an ectomorph, super skinny, there's a huge subset. The majority of the world, they'll just stay skinny the rest of their life. Then you have the second subset, which is all about, and I'm speaking of men, I'm a man, so I'm going to speak more to that. Uh, who wants to get bulky? They see like Mr. Olympia. They see all this. They're like, I'm going to put on mass. And they do whatever that takes. That can be, you know, be as far as eating a ton of food and can go as far as anabolic steroids, right? Or beyond <laughs> nowadays. And then there's the third category of dude who's like the cardio guy and is always just trying to get insanely lean. So category one stays, sticks with their normal body types, is that way the rest of their life. Second one tries to get super muscular. Third, super lean. Well, if you look at, they, they have these things called eye tracking, where I said people lie, but their eyes don't. For example, babies are more attracted to pictures of supermodels than unattractive people. And it's not cultural. That's a three-month-old baby who hasn't been indoctrinated in any culture. So we can see that, okay, why do these babies that have no culture really... Uh, no cultural indoctrination yet. Why are they? Why are their eyes with this special software, eye tracking software, focused on Giselle over an ordinary person? Well, there's a clue there. The clue is maybe there is something in our evolutionary past that humans that paid attention and focused and were attracted more to these quote unquote beautiful faces, maybe they did better in the reproductive pool of the last 10,000 generations of Homo sapiens. So when you look to your ancestors, you realize there's clues as to how your body should look. So for example, for men, what the actual science says, if you go with this hypothesis that I put forward, that you should optimize for looking sexy to the opposite sex, because that's the healthiest. Not necessarily a huge bulky bodybuilder. It's interesting. Well, one of my business partners, he was super skinny. Then I got him into weightlifting and he went crazy. And he's like, I'm going to become a mass monster. And I said, well, if your goal is to have females attracted to you, which probably is indicative of the optimal health, you know, the ratios, you don't want to be a huge bodybuilder. And he's like, what do you mean? You know, and I said, so I pulled every time for a year we were out and there was women around. I would pull up a bodybuilder, a huge mass monster, 
bodybuilder's Instagram and I would show it to women. I'd say, rank this guy one to 10, how attractive you find him. One, two, zero. My friend was like, I'm blown away. I thought women would love that mass monster. I'm like, no, men like mass monsters more. We like that, you know, it probably goes to our evolutionary past. When you went to war, small band ambush warfare, which is what our hunter-gatherer ancestors mostly engaged in, not large set scale. They call it, you know, set, ba ba set piece battle, but ambushes. You wanted one or two huge guys on your side, right? So men are attracted more, maybe non-sexually most of the time, to big, bulky men, but women aren't. And there's clues there. We know super bulky men usually are not that healthy, especially if they've used, you know, something artificial to gain bulk. Women like men, what the science shows, that are above average upper body strength particularly, but overall, who are above average but not muscle bound. There's a, there's a great Dr. Buss's evolutionary psychology textbook has, I believe, those exact words from their, you know, they, they study like 40 cultures, what women find most attractive. So as a man, there's probably a clue there. That's probably the healthiest body type. And as a caveat, it helps you compete in the mating game. So yes, you want, you know, a lot of people talk about broad shoulders and the ratio, golden ratio, you know, Fibonacci sequence, you know, ratio 1.6 and all this. And there's truth to that, but you can also be in ratio and too bulky. So it's not just ratios. That's an incorrect understanding. So you could be the perfect ratio, but if you're muscle bound, most women find you not attractive. And there's a clue there in our evolutionary past that men that were that bulky did not compete as well. They were not as healthy. They call that evolutionary fitness. It's not fitness like fit, planet fitness. It's fitness. They call this, you know, biologically adaptive, right? So so you actually, it's not just ratios. It's also, there's an interesting thing you can do, which is measure your wrists. And that shows you kind of your frame. You're also, as a man, bounded by your frame. So Big Rome, some of you have seen him on my social media. He's six foot six, 330 pounds. A lot of women find him attractive, but, and he's got great, you know, he's got the ratio. You could see him on my social. But if a five foot six man, tried to go to 330 and still maintain the shoulder to width, you know, shoulder to, to, to waist ratio and all that, the muscle, the, the frame isn't big enough to support that. So you have to, as a man, know your framing too. And a good way is your wrists because wrists kind of hold constant and they're indicative of your skeletal structure, right? So if you have a six inch wrist, you probably never want to be 300 pounds no matter what the ratios are, okay? If you have a 10 inch risk, which is pretty big, you know, wrists don't really grow with weightlifting. That's why it's a good baseline. You can use ankles too, wrists and ankles. So you have to, with this concept, and right now I'm kind of in a getting skinny phase. I use a 67 body is a new program I put in. I, I spent a million bucks over the last six or seven years studying and going through every body hack, every legal thing I could get a doctor to prescribe me. I've tried a lot of sock tests in my blood, I think 40 times in six years. It's a lot. And, um, you know, what I've found, I put in this new system called 67 body. So if you want to go check it out, it has like really specific stuff, daily routine, but more specifics on what I'm talking about now. So I'll put a link below or just go to tylopez.com slash podcast 67 body tylopez.com slash podcast 67 body then i'll take you right to page it's a it's a paid program it's not that expensive though but try the 67 day challenge but it's built specifically for busy entrepreneurs how can you stay in shape when you're a busy entrepreneur so but going back to this you know i'm in a cutting phase the 67 bodies divided you go seasonally with your body type so there's like you know, for one season of the year, you bulk, one season you maintain, one season you cut, and one season you maintain again. So you're six months in maintenance, and then two seasons. So like in the spring, I'm cutting. So I'm a little skinny now, but it's interesting when I'm skinnier, women definitely find you more attractive. 
Now, you can be too skinny. That's why I said women like above average muscularity without being muscle bound. That's the key. Muscle bound. Not, and, and by the way, women's eyeballs are accurate. Muscle bound men have tremendous problems, respiratory problems, joint problems, heart problems. You can see that, you know, my dad was a pro bodybuilder. I love bodybuilders, so it's no offense to bodybuilders. Okay, hey, don't take this the wrong way. But science, you know, science doesn't lie. Good science doesn't lie, I should say. So you can use simple eye tracking of females. Ask them, show them pictures of you, your body in different states. Even if you're married and you're not even in the dating pool, or as scientists call it, the mating pool. Show your body. Um show different phases of your life ask women one to ten what do you rate my attractiveness here here and here and then you'll find most women not all obviously there's some taste element but women's tastes aren't as broad as people think okay pretty much any culture in the last ten thousand years if you show them a picture of brad pitt in fight club versus danny devito at any time in his life so there's universals here. <laughs> Some people say, ah, beauties, there's no universals to beauty. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, mean, I have my horses over there. I don't know if you can see them. You can bring a male stud horse and females don't find them attractive. There are specific things they look for. You know, all species, not even humans. So show pictures of yourself when you're at your skinniest, when you're at your bulkiest. You Men are surprised. Men tend, and there's... There's some interesting science on this that men tend to think that they'll look the sexiest when they're more like a, um, and they did this study, like they used, what is it, Muscle and Fitness Magazine? The cover of Muscle and Fitness Magazine, when they asked men, is this man the kind of body you want to have? Most men said yes. If you look over at female-dominated magazines, the Vogue's and so on, when they show pictures of men, and you show that to men, they say, oh, no, that guy's too skinny. He's muscular, but he's too skinny. But guess what? When you show it to women, they find them, they specifically in those Vogue magazines put the attractive male body type. If you look on the cover of, you know, romance novels, uh, generally the man is more. Actually, Brad Pitt Fight Club is what science says. Google Brad Pitt Fight Club. And there's variability. Some women like a little more muscular. So it's like Chris Hemsworth Thor. But very few, or Jason Momoa, there's women who like that. But if you, but they like them in certain, like in, in Game of Thrones, he wasn't massively bulky. So bulky is, is less attractive. There's a clue there that is probably less healthy for you too. So you get your cake and eat it too. You're healthier and women find you more attractive. By the way, and I'm not going to speak on this as much because I'm not a woman, Women should optimize their body for what men find most attractive because that's the whisper of 10,000 generations of our evolution, our quote-unquote DNA, showing you that women who looked this way that men found attractive, and yes, there's some cultural norms and some cultures like women, you know, thicker and some like them thinner. And it is true that the modern craze of hyper-skinny supermodels is not necessarily well, in fact, what most men find attractive is curvier. Like you, and it is also age dependent. It's a very nuanced conversation, right? So it's age related. I'm not going to go deep in this. It's so controversial. I feel like people will miss the point. But men in general tend to like a little, if they had to err, it'll be on the, the curvier side, right? So women like i said is that lean muscle look they like that brad pitt fight club not 23 inch biceps you know maybe 16 inch biceps with a six pack and men you know if you ask a thousand men in any culture and you give them pictures they're going to lean just a tad bit curvier than what modern beauty standards or at least if you look at the twiggy era of supermodels in the 19 80s and 90s that was probably skinnier so you, and lo and behold women are that healthy when they're sub 19 percent body fat so the eyeballs leave clues what the opposite sex finds attractive has left it leaves clues in the evolutionary to our evolutionary past and so yeah 
Anyway, we're going to talk about this more. I'll put this in 67 body. Tylopez.com slash podcast 67 body. Or you can just click the link. Jump in the program and just try the 67 day challenge. I'll show you, especially if you're a busy entrepreneur and don't have time to do traditional fitness programs. I built one that, how did I get in better shape? And you can see before and after pictures. Um, and I've tried it. I've gotten super bulky where I'm benching 300 plus, you know, and I've gotten super lean where I'm at, you know, I don't get crazy lean, but eight, 9%. And then got a six pack and it's interesting. Women's response much better at that level. As long as you can keep kind of wide shoulders and uh, a little bit of muscularity. You don't want to be weirdly skinny uh, using this scale. One of my brothers is 6'3 and extra skinny. His height kind of makes up for it, but women will always like it when he's a little more muscular. So anyway, click the link. Now leave a comment. Is this all BS that I said? What's the counter argument? I always like counter arguments. What's some science backing up what I said? And by the way, if you want some of the links, I'll put the notes to this episode com slash podcast 32423. I'll put some references to the books I mentioned to some of these scientific studies. Tylopez.com slash podcast 32423. I'll see you there.